Okay, so GCC Maths Paper 2, we want some last minute tips for this one. But don't worry, I'm going to tell you some things that I did for this exam. Some of them come back to what Paper 1 was about, but there are some other things that because it's now a calculator exam that you can apply for this paper. So let's just get straight on with it. I'm going to talk about the calculator aspect first. And the one thing I want to mention is that now you have a calculator, you should be able to know how to use it very well. Now I have here the A-level calculator. I'm going to link a video that I made a while back where I talk about some tips that you can do on your calculator. So back then I think I had the GCC one with me and I went through some things that you can do on that calculator that can speed a lot of questions up for you. So one of the things I talked about in that video was the fact that there's an option to do the quadratic formula on the calculator like really really easily and so if you have that calculator it can just speed up a lot of things so fast for you. So that's one thing I really want to get clear to you guys. Check out that video hopefully you learn a few things that you can do on the calculator that you didn't know beforehand. I also want to say make sure you know how to use the store button on your calculator. This is very very important especially when you're dealing with a really big question and you have lots of things to get through so you want to make sure that you've organized everything and you don't want to round anything you want to use them all in the full form so let me just show you how you can do that okay so for the a level one here you have that alpha button right there let's say you just do like two times three or something so you get your value there's this store button right down here and so whenever you get an answer you can click store here you can click a b c d whatever letter you want to store it as you can continue with the question what i like to do myself is as i'm doing the question and each time i get a number that i might use later on somewhere especially for those long questions the ones that require multiple things to do next to the value i put really small like the letter a if i store it in the a variable if i store it in b whatever I just make a note there so then when I'm doing the question it's so much easier firstly but secondly you have to make sure that you're always working with all the decimals that you have if you continue rounding every number that you're getting what's going to happen is that your answer at the end is just going to be a tiny bit off what the actual answer is so you could literally be off by one or two purely because you rounded everything and you didn't leave them in their full form and that will get you a wrong answer you will lose a mark for that so you need to make sure that whenever you're doing these questions you always keep them in their full form in the calculator I personally would recommend to always keep them in fractional form if you can so if it gives you a fraction write it down as that fraction you don't need to convert everything into decimals and round them because you're going to lose your accuracy like that so what I'm trying to get at is firstly learn how to use that calculator of yours but secondly make sure that whenever you're doing these calculations calculations to keep them in their full form so you don't lose that mark. It's a very easy mark to lose but it's also a very easy mark to gain if it's something that you usually like to make the mistake of. So that's talking about the calculator aspect of things. Now I want to talk about what you should be doing specifically for this exam. So let me talk about firstly what you should be doing if you're literally minutes away from the exam. If you're at this stage and you're watching this video saying oh I'm cooked I know nothing and my exam is in a few hours what I want you to do is to watch as many YouTube videos as you can in this time of people going through questions so this is something I mentioned in my previous video as well but when you're in such a short time frame before your exam all you can do now is to watch other people do questions and to understand why they're doing certain things and if you're one of those people who've literally done nothing and you're sitting there like I just want to get a pass I don't even know where to begin what do I do what you should do in that scenario is to go to a website called Maths Genie I'll put a link of this in the description but it's got this really nice resource where it shows you every single grade and every single topic you need to master within that grade boundary so you can get that grade basically. So for example, if you're aiming for a grade one, you should just know how to add and multiply and divide, right? But if you're aiming for that pass, there's a few different topics that if you master them, you're more likely to get a pass overall. And if you want to aim for that grade nine, if you want to get an eight or a nine, seven, eight, nine, whatever it is that you want to get, you can look for those really difficult topics, the ones that are very high in marks and usually come at the very end of the paper and you can focus on those. And if you are one of those grade nine students who are looking for those top top marks what I recommend for you to do in that scenario is to focus on the last thirds of every paper so there may be some papers that you haven't finished yet try and just focus on those last couple questions in every paper because those are usually the most difficult and try and see if you can get those ones correct and if you can get those ones correct you're most likely going to get the easy versions of those difficult questions so for example if you've got a really hard circle theorem question right you're more likely to get the easy circle theorem questions right just obviously that's if you're aiming for the high high marks if you're aiming for just a pass try and focus on the smaller topics and trying to master those and the ones that appear most often within the papers and just try and understand those ones and if you don't know how to understand them watch people doing questions on them that's what you need to do don't just sit there passively and watch someone else do the question try and understand how they're doing it pause the video try and do it yourself if you can't do it then continue watching see how they did it and if you understand do a couple questions and you should be fine after that so Master Genie also have some practice questions for every single topic as well so if you do want to know if you've mastered that topic and you do have time to do practice do that 
if your exam is tomorrow, if you have the time, what you should spend doing in this time is those practice questions, is those topic questions. Try and master each topic one by one. And then for the remainder of your time, as I said in my previous video as well, try and watch people do past paper walkthroughs. Watch them go through papers and you watch along and try and do them as they do them. Especially because some of those easy one mark questions might be stuff that you haven't done in a while and you might just forget. So if you see someone else doing those papers, you'll remember those things again and it'll come back into your head. And so at this stage, I don't really want you to be doing a full paper anymore. Just focus on doing every topic one by one and strengthening everything like that. Now, another thing I do want to mention is about predicted papers and predicting topics and what topics are going to come up in paper two, which ones came up in paper one, things like that. Genuinely, don't worry too much about predicting what's going to happen. Don't listen too much to people saying which topics are going to come up. Just focus on learning as many topics as you can. You're still at the stage where they can throw anything at you. But if there are some topics that were very, very heavy in paper one, you can use that as a bit of a guidance towards what you're going to revise for paper two now. So if they had a really big question at the end on one topic, most likely not going to get another question on it, but obviously don't neglect it entirely. This is just simply if you don't have the time to go over everything, there are areas where you can focus more because those are the areas that weren't touched on as much in paper one. Paper three is more likely for you to be able to predict the questions that are going to come up because you've gone through two whole papers worth of questions now and so any topics that are remaining are most likely going to come up in the third paper so that's why anything can still come up in paper two so you should still go over as much of it as you can but apart from that my main advice is to learn the calculator know the tricks within them make sure you don't run any of your numbers watch those videos go through those maths genie topics that i told you to and just simply watch videos on other people doing the questions watch people doing the past papers do as many topic questions as you can. A lot of it is the same as paper one, purely because you're still doing maths, it's still the same concept, you're still learning the same topics. So that's why I just wanna say, focus as much on practicing as you can and try to understand as many of those topics as possible. If you are wondering what topics there are, I will link the same checklist that I did for my previous video to just go through one by one every single topic, make sure you know everything very well. And apart from that, that's all I have to say. So good luck for this exam. This is now your second half of your exam season. This will go through just as fast as the first half did and before you know it you're going to be relaxing in your summer so good luck and see you very soon